过去，有红色的土，蓝色的天，彩色的金朝阳。我唔怕受过，唔怕伤伤。Hello, ni hao, da jia zao an. Good morning to everyone joining us in Taiwan. Da jia wan an, and good evening to everyone joining us in the United States. My name is David Thomas Cronin, and I am the moderator for this evening, the English premiere of the groundbreaking Taiwanese new musical Tropical Angels. What you just saw was the beautiful illustration,、uh, the trailer illustrated by Chiao Yu Ho. And this evening, we are going to premiere Act One of the English reading of Tropical Angels. I am so humbled to be with you this evening and to be working on this beautiful piece of theater.、Um, the presentation will last about fifty-five minutes, and it will be followed by a forty-five-minute talkback with the creative team and members of the cast. And then we will open up a fifteen-minute Q and A session for everyone joining us、uh, for this evening's presentation. Xie xie for everyone that was involved with this production and for everyone that's with us this evening. And I hope that you enjoy the English premiere of the groundbreaking Taiwanese new musical Tropical Angels. August fifteenth. Another year has passed. Angela, I thought you wouldn't come back this summer. Ah.、Uh. What are you doing? This is Radio Taiso, radio exercises. Someone gave me this tape not long ago. So many memories here. I had to exercise this every day when I was. That's not what I mean. I mean this. The Pacific War ended on this date. I can't help missing my friends from the war. Ah, they were Imperial Japanese Army. They started that horrible war. Yes, but I was a part of it. It's not right.
Angela. You've changed. Yeah. Before I knew nothing and didn't dare to ask. But recently I have read a lot and thought I have questions. What are your questions? Before World War II, Taiwan had been colonized for 50 years. Men were forced to go to the front. Women were forced to be comfort women. The World War II ended 30 years ago, and yet you still miss the past. You! You think you have read a lot. Actually, you don't know anything. You don't understand history. You, you don't understand me. Exactly! I've tried so hard to understand you. But you never talk about those years. It's too complicated. I don't want to talk about it. You always say you want to be a writer. But you can't even write your own story. I... Ba... Tell me... What happened to you during the Pacific War? The past me... Died once in Timor. What? It has been so long since I've thought of you, my younger self. When will you start telling my story? Your story is lost in the past, in the days when I spoke Japanese. Switch it into another language. Let our story come alive again. Can I really tell it? Can I do it justice? I remember it. In Timor, my soul wanders, scarred and bloody shore. Lost to memory, lost to history, one more relic produced by the war. I wandered the shores of Timor as half a broken soul. Tell our story. And remember a time we were home. A war has changed my life. What does she want, Dare? Who am I? What? Shushay. In 1940, our story can't be denied. 1940, where our lives intertwined. Back when our voices were silent, we just forget.
train you into a dignified imperial soldier. Yes. Louder. Yes, sir. Mm. My name is not Hayashi. My family name is Lin. Not Hayashi. You've got a lot of nerve to change my name. Change my story, my past. You can berate me or hate me, mistreat me or beat me. It's all fine with me. I'm standing here, won't disappear. Title turned, but I'll remain the same. I'm standing here, I'll shout it loud and clear. History will never change my name. Rising sun, casting shadows on my homeland. We can pretend, we can lie, grit our teeth and close our eyes. But truth will always find a way. This pain cannot be silenced. I will not be a quiet sacrifice. I'm standing here, won't disappear. Tide will turn, but I'll remain the same. I'm standing here, I'll shout it loud and clear. History will never change my name. I'm standing here, won't disappear. I tried not to be changed by the environment of the battlefield. My commander mocked me as a coward who wouldn't dare to shoot.
the island's population was made of mostly soldiers and poor women who were captured and used for sex. You know them as comfort women. Those women were taken from their homes and thrown in jail after receiving training from the madam. They were expected to serve the Japanese soldiers. It was then that I met a very special girl. Dear Heavenly Father, I can't remember how many days have passed. Can you hear me pray? Do you still bless us? I remember the red of the earth, clear blue sky, bright green banana leaves, my plans for the future, for two kids of my own. I was so naive, so full of hope. I remember the sweetest of dreams, but they defy reality. It's only at night that I can run from this agony. The night jolt awake to this nightmare. I remember the sweetest of dreams, but they defy reality. They slip through my hands, they outrun my feet. There's a place deep in my heart where they defy defeat. I remember the sweetest of dreams, but then at dawn they retreat. A tender kiss, a fragile kind of bliss, it all shatters at dawn. When the nightmare goes on, my most hopeful dream was to cool reality. I wonder if the girl within those fantasies still lives on in me. Don't be nervous. You understand me? Yes, I'm from Taiwan. Wasi Taiwan Lang. What's your name? My name is Hayashi. No. What's Yao Lin Yi Ping? 
Then Yiping. So you're not a Japanese devil. No, I'm from Taiwan. If that's true, then you can let me out. I'm afraid I can't. Why not? Because I'm a Japanese soldier. You're Taiwanese, but a Japanese soldier. You're worse than the devils themselves. Go away, go! Okay, okay, okay. I'll go. Abu. Abu. This is for you. Tou Dao Tum, peanut brittle. I got it from Taiwan. You don't have to eat it if you don't want to. It's good, huh? This is the flavor of your hometown? This is the flavor of my hometown in Taiwan. Taiwan. It's the sweetest thing I know. The flavor of my home is sweet like rainfall in the springtime. Peanut powder in a wrap, salty and sweet. Like sweeping graves in the mist. A sweet and salty taste, a flavor that can't be erased. The sweetest thing I know is knowing someone is waiting, waiting in the doorway, trusting that I'll come back home. The sweetest taste I know, barring life's most bitter taste, keeps me in this place. The sweetest taste I know, the sweetest memory, carries me across the big salty sea. Salty and sweet, like homesick tears in this foreign heat. Falling late at night. I have to leave. Please, take care. I, the same to you. What? This taste is salty and sweet. It reminds me of an angel who watched over me, but he disappeared over the mountains one sunset. In silence I weep, salty tears till I fall asleep. Sunshine. Like a painting you frame on the wall. Voice just like the warmest breeze. Air like clouds up over the seas. And a softy feel glow from far away. Still, still he circles round the bay like an So, where are your wings? What? Nothing. Nothing. I believe the sweetest taste I know He hasn't left me Just knowing someone is waiting Waiting, midnight. waiting in the doorway She will, will be there, there at my side, side. As, As I, I draw, draw my very last and die He will see me through Love, I'll make it true Safe to you. I must be led by ghosts to believe in you. If there's anything I can do, I'll try my best. Then, Mr. Lin, can you find something for me? Find what? Tell me, I'll, I'll help you find it. My cross. I lost it on my journey. My mother gave it to me. Can you find it for me? Okay. That's a promise. 
So, uh, can I have your name? My name is Lysalin. Like Charlene. It's a beautiful name. Salty and sweet, sweet like, like homesick tears in this foreign heat. heat. Falling late at night. This girl who spoke my dialect. Reminded me of my fiance, whom I had lost touch with. Soon I would be transferred. the office of the commander Matsunaka. During the final period of the Pacific War, Japan fell gradually. The Imperial Japanese Army started to send kamikaze pilots who attacked American warships and by sacrificing themselves many young people never came back sir soldier Hayashi reporting I received a transfer order to serve under you. Hmm. Work hard. You may leave now. Sir, can I ask you a question? Speak. It is said that you always ask the best soldier to be your orderly. Yes. And so what? So why did you pick me? You don't believe you're good enough. <laughs> Nonsense! You have no guts! Even so, you remind me of a man. Who are you talking about, sir? That's not important. He had already dedicated his life to the Japanese Empire and become a kamikaze. Uh, stop dallying! Walk faster! What's the matter? Come in, sir! The tribe we have a peace agreement with caught one of our men raping one of their women. Oh, again? Hayashi, kill him! That way we'll have some sort of explanation for the chief. I... 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 So timid! How can you be an Imperial soldier? Uh, sir, there has been an update from the mission. Speak! Our team has been wiped out. And the enemy? They experienced no damages. Hayashi, take it back to the tribe and tell them that's my explanation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kamikaze, 
Divine wind, when will you cease to blow? Broken heart, when did you stop feeling any pain? Do you pump any blood still through my veins? You are silent and still. The wind that blows ruthless and chill. Come, because the godly wind blows. No surrender, I carry on. I'm complaining. I must defend the smiles of my nation. The storm turns, but I won't abandon my station. Come, Come, because never question, never waver, never seem to hear the things I dare not say. understand why my commander took such good care of me. It, it seemed like, it seemed to me that he had a secret in his heart. But I was occupied with training and hired a local boy the search for Shaolin's cross. Kuru, I asked you to find a cross for me. Have you? Of course. Take it. You're making fun of me. <laughs> Those arrogant priests. I won't for any stupid cross. Watch out or I'll shoot you. Nonsense! You wouldn't dare to shoot, coward. Oh, I would. Coward! Any hunter in our tribe is stronger than you. Uh, I'm an imperial soldier, much stronger than any hunter. Coward! You don't know yourself. You can only be hunted. What? Hunter or the hunted! Uh, hunter! Through and through, let the huntsmen showdown begin. I won't lose to you. Say, what kind of prey do you want to be? I want to be a. No, wait, I don't want to be prey. <laughs> One, two. You're outrageous. I'm going to. Shoot me? Come on. <laughs> Bluffing will be a big mistake. Prey are meant for the dinner plate. Only true hunters can survive. I just want to make it home alive. Hunter or the haunted, it's not up to you to say. Lit, my boy, you better get to wising up. Cause the game is on and the hunters don't play. Hunter or the haunted. Is it not for me to say? The oppressor or the subject? Really, it's quite hard to say. Rascal, I'll kill you! Oh, I can shoot. I just don't want to do it. Shh! Someone is coming! 
Oh, that's my friend, Yoshimoto. Is he on a date with a comfort woman? Your friend has fallen into a trap. What? Just wait and see. Soki, please wait. Go away. Leave me alone, okay? so cold to me. I asked you to do me a favor, and I paid you back. I don't owe you anything. Soki, just one hug, please. Oh! Leave me alone. We chosen women are not that easy. You bitch! How dare you! Did I hurt you? <laughs> so, so sorry, sweetheart. I'm a man. You can't hurt me anyway. You're always my princess. Miserable worm! Yes, you are! <laughs> are you Hunter or the Hunted? And the answer's just hot air. Cause you can be as tough as nails With the kiss, with a kiss You're tangled in the snare Ayashi, a letter from Taiwan Give it here Wow, a love letter You rascal, beat it So rough <laughs> You're not worried out Jared Come on, call me daddy Come on Please. Daddy. <laughs> Just a piece of paper can make a man blather like a baby. A love <laughs> trap. Oh. <laughs> now when it comes to love, all hunters will lose. He doesn't, but he's so ready on the dinner plate. Man or woman, who's the hunter? Man or woman, who's the hunted? Who can really say, let me what times are strong? All on the bay. Hunter or the hunted? Once you raise the white flag, you're the crew. Coward, what happened to you? The air raid by American fighters. My fiance is dead. I almost lost the courage to live from the loss of my fiance. I couldn't search for Shalin's cross as I had promised. I knew her suffering had just begun. After her forced training, she had become a comfort woman. used to mommy Asuko's house? Oh, don't be nervous. We won't have you go to war without proper training. <laughs> hey, stop her! Don't let her run away! <gasps> stop! Bring her to me. Yes, mama Yasuko. Yes, mama Yasuko. Please release me. 
Do not be afraid, girl. We are all the same here. She'll need a new name. What should it be? Fujiko? Hanako? <gasps> Yoko? <laughs> no. Please release me. Enough, girl! There is no reason Muyo. to be scared. Muyo. You may lose your Muyo. name, but you will still be you. Oh, Shalin! Please release me! My mom waits for me home! Please! Women need to live. You have to become a tree. Where are you from? Where did you go? Who really cares to know? Take off your dirty clothes. Once when the world was young, I was dumb and in love. In love. In love. How, How long, long ago? ago? I traded all that I could give for his heart. With every song, with, with every, every dance. dance, with every tryst, I saw our futures come by. God, he fled into the night and left me behind. Precious use, poor excuse, the game is rigged so you, the dice will keep us spinning, trees are like ladies, we're not blades of grass or daisies, you can't clog a wobble tree. Mend the end that bad, but don't let yourself be half the truth is all that they say is dirty skin. So do boys take the shelter of fallen trees for, for shade. Oh, baby, won't you stay for a my dear? Welcome to the So to water her soil with their tears, where were they bury their wartime fears? Persevere, they will need a branch to swing from when the last of hope disappears. Hands intertwined. Have a new name here. Koyuri. I 
I spent two dollars to visit the military brothel in an attempt to distract myself from my fiance. First time at the conversation, I was greeted by Lai Shaving. It's you, Shaving. Better or Shaving? Please call me Koyuri. Did you find my cross? And search for it. If you couldn't do it, you shouldn't have promised me you would. I don't want to search for that fucking cross! I couldn't imagine you'd end up just like the rest of them. Don't look at me like that. What happened to you, Mr. Lin? You can tell me. You wouldn't understand. You couldn't understand. Your smiles disappeared into darkness. Your entire body shakes like a snarling wanted beast. If I give my body up to you, would my surrender really soothe your soul? If you want to cry, my shoulder's here for you. If you are not all right, then hold me close to Tears on your face prove there's good in your heart. They say all I need to know. Let them fall, let them fall. Drop by drop, tears off your walls. Tears are human, I don't mind at all. I won't cry. I'm not a sissy. If you want to cry, I'll be at your side. Decent man who hurts and feels and bleeds. You can cry, it's only natural to grieve. Tears are proof that your true self still breathes. I feel your pain, no need to explain. I won't leave. Teardrops falling, sliding down your cheek. Don't brush them away, they don't make you weak. Let them flow, let them fall. Drop by drop, dissolve your walls. Tears are human, I don't mind at all. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you cry. Those are my happy tears. I'm glad you've come back. I swear, I will never put my hands on you. And this time, I will find you your cross. You don't have to. The priest said, if you look to the sky for the Southern Cross, you'll always find your way. Southern Cross, you glimmer in the night. If I'm lost, I know that you'll lead me back to the light. Southern Cross, you may be far, but you're here by my side. We must soldier on, face another dawn. Drop 
I drop this of your walls. Tears are human. I don't mind at all. Shelling pulled me from the dark and I regained my hope for life I wanted to do something for her so everywhere for her cross. Where is it? Hayashi! Yes, sir! Why are you out so late? I'm looking for something, sir. You're missing a piece of gear? No, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> relax. We're off duty. Come over here. Why? Uh, I, I heard you were good at judo. Let's have a match. Sir, I think that would be inappropriate. Why? I've seen you spar with others. I don't think you can beat me. <laughs> What with all this confidence? <laughs> Matsunaga grabbed me and pushed me down before I could respond. In the back and forth, while pressed down to the ground, I found Something in the dirt. At that moment, I heard a gunshot. And a bullet pierced my arm. We were attacked by the local rebels. One of the warriors aimed his gun at my commander. But before he could shoot, I knocked his rifle from his hands as he let out a round into the air. The rebels scattered back into the forest one by one. Are you alright, sir? Watch your back! I turned around and reflexively shot to kill. But it wasn't a rebel I had shot. It was Kuru with a wooden cross in his head. Look, rascal. Kuru! No. Look what I made for you. No. no. Kuru! Kuru! I, I killed him. I killed him. You have proven yourself as an imperial soldier, Hayashi. Don't call me that, Hayashi! Hayashi! This cross heavy in my hand, the memory of her motherland. I've stained this precious relic with the blood of an honest man. How am I? to tell her why is it that Taiwanese hands always bear arms for Japan now that my hands are bloodied I'm scared that maybe she'll flinch and pull away say I'm not human at all sterling 
Wearing silver cross shimmers and shines. Held in my heart. Leaving a scar. Heavy to hold. Burning hot like a star. Already, Already I am not who I thought I was. I'm too far gone. I'm too far gone. I'm not myself. There's nothing shining in the night. Please tell me how do I make things right? Courage to face another cursed day. Southern Cross in the light, you fade away. Shaolin Silver Cross belongs to her. I will bring it back. This cross must be returned. You will see. I can still return to who I used to be. Mark my words, history will never change my name. Hello, ni hao, xie xie. Thank you so much for everyone that joined us for the English premiere of the groundbreaking new Taiwanese musical, Tropical Angels. Thank you, thank you. We're so happy to have you guys here and we're so happy to have worked on this production um, and be sharing it with you now. Um, before we jump into the talk back and I introduce the rest of the panel of the creative team and members of the cast of Tropical Angels, um, we are going to have a, a pre-recorded video remark from Joyce Chiu. Um, the artistic, artistic director of the National um, Chai Chung uh, Theater in Taiwan. Uh, so please enjoy a few words from Joyce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Joyce Cho. I'm the general and artistic director of the National Tai Chung Theater. We are one of the three members of the National Performing Arts Center in Taiwan. So good morning and good evening, as this is early in the morning in Taipei time, in Taiwan time. Um, I would like to thank you for participating in our script reading of musical Tropical Angels tonight. Tropical Angels is created by Lin Menghuan and composed by Sheng Lei. I would like to specially introduce you to Meng Huan, as he is one of our artists in residence for the year of 2019 and 20. As we invite him to become one of our artists in residence, he told us that he would like to adapt Mr. Chen Tianwu's novel, Coming Back Alive, into a theatrical project. We are really happy that after two years, we can support him throughout his creative a stage. And this, the Chinese version of Tropical Angels will be premiered in July 2021. If you are happen to be in Taiwan, you are mostly welcome to join our world premiere. Last but not least, I would like to express my gratitude to Taipei Culture Center in New York, Hao Rand, and the Musical Theater Factory for their great effort to make this stage reading possible during this pandemic period. My special thanks goes to cre the creative team, including stage director, Mr. David Thomas Corning, mu music director, Ms. Sobina Chi, and all of the performers tonight. And now I'm going to sit back and listen to your feedback. Thank you. Ni hao, xie xie to Joyce. Thank you so much for those beautiful words. Um, I am 
Very humbled to be here with my best friend. This is Yi Shin Sabina Chi Cantor. She is the musical director of the uh, English premiere of Tropical Angels. And I'm going to introduce the rest of our panel, uh, members of our creative team and a cast member from the reading Tropical Angels. Um, today, we are very, very fortunate to have um, Yi Shin uh, Sabina Chi joining us. Hey. Uh, we have uh, Datsa Lin Meng Huan the playwright of the piece that we just watched, um, the composer, uh, Shen Li. Uh, we have Mu Shi Giao, the dramaturg joining us. We have Yang Yen Su, the script translator. Emily Chu, the lyric translator. And we have uh, Gabby Greenwald, one of the performers from this evening. She played Lai Shalin and Koyuri, excuse me. And uh, Mei En Teo, the artistic director of uh, Musical Theater Factory. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you so much for everyone, everything that you did on this project thus far. Uh, truly, Sabina and I know yes. how much <laughs> everyone worked on this um, as we were, got to collaborate with many of you. And I'm very excited for us to have this opportunity to now to discuss this very unique uh, collaboration experience um, in this uh, new era of our careers of virtual theater. Um, Thank you so much. Um, I have a couple of topics that I would love to throw around with you guys and see uh, how we feel or things that we'd like to share. I know many of us actually worked on the production um, and for most of us, it was a very uh, new experience. Um, I, I can say Sabina and I have been working together for years and we have are very fortunate to be working in person, live theater together. So this was an incredible learning experience. Um, not only doing a piece that was the first time in a new in a new tongue, a new language, but also having to uh, collaborate with um, our fellow artists via Zoom and phone calls and Facebook Messenger <laughs> and FaceTime and yeah. um, also a time difference. I've never worked on a show with such a time difference before. That was an incredibly uh, unique learning experience. Um, and so I'm very interested to talk to you guys today. Um, one of the things that um, I definitely want to talk about um, with uh, our two uh, our two stars, I, Doxa and Shen, I'm so humbled and I, I love you both and I'm so thankful that the two of you trusted me with this piece. Um, I thank you um, and I just want I want to I want to hear from you guys. Um, I also specifically want to know because we didn't I didn't get to talk enough about it, but uh, the novel Coming Back Alive by Chen Quan Wu. Uh, and where that piece came into your life and how you chose this story or what it was about this story that made you say, I'm gonna write a musical and then I'm also gonna put that musical in another language. Like what <laughs> what that journey was for you two. If you guys would talk a little bit about that. Yeah. All right. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. <laughs> I will use the Chinese to, to uh, answer this question because this question is more complicated and Shen will help me to translate it. Yeah,呃，我非常喜欢陈千武的这个小说《活着回来》。那我其实非常早就看过这部小说，我十五岁就看过这部小说了。呃，so uh, uh, that uh, has been like loving this novel for quite a while, and it's like since he was fifteen years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The novel is called Coming Back Alive. 然后，呃，但是它的改编的难度非常高，所以在就是其实这个这个想法一直放在心里面，然后到了过了将近二十年的时间，那就是学，然后才有机会把它搬上舞台。嗯， so it's like, uh, it's a piece that is really hard to adapt to stage because like it's a novel and it's like spend a quite a long time in terms of time span and like. I think the original text of the novel is a little bit more like poetic instead of like dramatic. So it's it took it took like that's twenty almost twenty years to <laughs> actually come up with an idea to adapt it into stage. Yeah. 然后变成呃在转化成音乐剧的过程当中呢，其实最后也是截取了原作的精神，然后让它可以变成是更多的戏剧性，然后以及让音乐的元素可以。融合进来，其实是做了蛮大的幅度的改变的。Yeah, so during this adaptation, uh, we kind of like grab the essence of the novel and try to uh, make it to like extract more dramatic moments and also to figure out how to let music to be a way to express the, as a, as the essence of the novel. Yeah, yeah. I hope I, I, I answered the question. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, uh, absolutely. I, I just, I have to tell you, I'm so taken when I read the script and I read the first version of the translation. Obviously, it was a story that I had no experience with. Um, and growing up here in America, too, I felt like I felt incredibly ignorant to the Pacific War, being that it's not something that we are shoved down our throats in history. And then having to really, and uh, Mushi, the dramaturg, and I uh, talked a lot about uh, really making sure that I could answer, that I knew more than enough to answer any question that uh, arose. And uh, Mushi, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, directing a period piece, mm -hmm. especially in the virtual uh, realm. But this story was just so beautiful. The first time going through, I was like, it was upsetting that it was only act one too. I was like, you can't leave me here. Like, it was like, I'm now so invested in these humans and the story. And like, I'm just like here, obviously, and that's how you end an act because I care, right? That's why I will see act two. But I was like, oh, I was so taken with the story. And I, it was just so humbling to be part of it. And be, I was just very curious as to what that experience was for you and uh, how you chose that. Yeah. Um, is this a is this a novel that you would say um, people uh, living in Taiwan are mostly familiar with? Is this is a very no, not, not, not really. really. It's not really. <laughs> right. That's so cool, though. That's so cool. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Then thank you. Thank you for that. That is incredible. Yeah. Um, amazing. Um, uh, one of the one of the things of many one of the many things working on this show that was new and a uh, incredible learning experience for me was that this was an international production. And so that our team, uh, you know, Sabina and I were uh, here in New York and many of our actors were here in New York. Also, all of our actors were um, in America, but many of our actors were also in California. So that was a different time difference, uh, uh, learning to schedule rehearsals and all the Zoom calls and all that. Um, Los Angeles is a little less dramatic <laughs> than Taiwan. Um, but um, uh, we were also the pseudo stage manager for this production. So I was like, what time is it? Um, that was always a question. Um, but um, one, of, uh, one of the pieces of this international uh, uh, piece is that uh, there were many languages in this uh, production, in this story. Um, and uh, having a, a dialect of Taiwanese, Hokkien, um, having characters that would be speaking Japanese, right? If these, uh, uh, these characters were taken to this island, Timor, um, and then now having to tell the story in the form of English. That was a big struggle uh, for us, uh, trying to determine that if we were speaking English, how do I let the audience know that the character would actually be speaking Japanese? And then at some point, that the character would recognize Hokkien because I'm still receiving the form of English, right? And obviously as a, I mean, I'm, I apologize for my Mandarin, but I, I've been learning so much Mandarin. It's just like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm, trying. I'm trying. And I, for me, that was like, I wanted to really know that the characters, what tongue the characters were speaking. Cause I think that it's all about identity, this piece and, the, and their culture, right? So when, when Lin speaks a uh, Hokkien versus when uh, Lin speaks to uh, Matsunaga in Japanese, that is really, really pivotal. And that was really difficult in English um, for, for us to determine that. And, uh, and the, you guys were amazing with collaborating and deciding where we should hear that native tongue, where that should happen. And I still think there's a lot to discover and develop in act one even just about if the piece is in English, how much more um, Hokkien we can hear. and Truly, there should be moments of uh, Yasuko and Matsunaga giving us Japanese as well, right? Um, and then, of course, then at that point, we can have a dialect coach on our team, too, that can help us <laughs> discover yeah. all those moments for authenticity purposes. Um, so that was something um, I love to talk about. I want to um, bring up Gabby Greenwald, who is one of our beautiful actresses. Congratulations, Ooh. honey. You were stunning. It's such a privilege to work with you every time. Yes. Um, I want, uh, Gabby, you were here from the States um, and uh, we threw some, um, we threw another language at you. If you wanted to um, talk yeah, a little so bit about was, that um, in your a lot experience. Of, like, voice memo, I would like cut down, I would take voice memos of the, um, the, what I was supposed to say in the other language. And then I would pretty much just play it over and over and over again. Like literally like the two seconds, it just like, whatever it was, like, booyao, 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 or like, la shaline, la shaline, la shaline, la shaline. Um, and all the moments when I was on Zoom and I wasn't um, technically, you know, being rehearsed with, I would be on mute and just like keep playing it. Um, so yeah, it was definitely difficult, but it was also so manageable at the same time. Um, yeah, given that it wasn't a lot, but it was enough, like you said, to, to communicate that I was speaking that language when I was speaking Japanese, it was enough to get the you know the the point across so yes i want to say something like uh gabby you just wonderful we're so happy so grateful to have you just want to share a little bit like during the rehearsal because a lot of uh, dialect 
is not in English. So we're like, oh my God, like, and then David doesn't, well, I'm working on that, but David doesn't really speak Chinese. So a lot of the times it's like, I know Gabby works so hard, I have to record that. And then Gabby just repeat. And then like next day it's like, can you please say, like, you know, tell me again. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say you did a wonderful job. Like that was beautiful. And thank you so much for like no, putting so much effort. No, my pleasure to say the least. It was, yeah, thank you. And my goal is to let like, all my friends around me speaking Chinese. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you, I'm, Gabby. I, I I know that if, even when auditioning for the production, that wasn't something that we had uh, thrown at you or known that we were going to do. But when we were reading the script over and over and over again, I just felt that there was something that was missing for the rest of the American audience to be like, oh, there's a whole part of the story. There's a layer here that's missing that when people are speaking and allowed to be themselves because they've been asked to not be themselves in the story. Like mm -hmm. that felt really important and authentic to me. And I, Gabby and I learned Mandarin, uh, well, yeah. we learned like seven <laughs> sentences in Mandarin together. So that was an incredible <laughs> and beautiful learning experience, right? Um, and um, there were very few of the actors in the company that had really spoken uh, Chinese before. So that was really incredible too. And then to collaborate with those of us who were comfortable with the language and finding, uh, what what made the most sense, what was most manageable in this Zoom experience, which we will talk about the process of virtual theater in a moment, <laughs> um, for sure. Um, uh, great, so that brings me to, um, that brings me to our story of language and uh, where we are. This is, uh, this is considered a period piece, right? Uh, this piece takes place in two uh, time periods in two different uh, locations. We are in, uh, Taiwan in the 1970s, and it's a bit of a flashback piece, um, which can be done really cool on stage. And I think that we uh, we made the most that we could uh, virtually to discover those two different uh, uh, aesthetics of those two time periods and places. And then in the 1940s, to more a Southern Pacific Island. Um, what I I worked a lot with Mushi, um, who is our uh, beautiful dramaturg, who is incredibly helpful. Thank you for every moment that I got to lean on you in Thank this you. Uh, this production. Um, but doing, I've been very fortunate enough to direct period pieces before. I've directed operas and a lot of musical theater. Um, and it's very different as a director with the team when everyone's in the room and you can bounce ideas off and then we use the best idea. Nobody's specific idea, but the best idea and collaborating with one another and finding that the costume person can add a new light because something that happens during that time or the set designer brings us something of like a material that I didn't realize this would be made out of or um, our dialect coach or our dramaturg. And for this production, it was really Sabina I and then, uh, frantically being like, Mushi. <laughs> so like, um, hey. so I'm so thankful. So if you want to talk a little bit about uh, working on, obviously period pieces are what you do as a dramaturg, right? But the, having to do it in the lens of virtual theater, I'd love to get an insight to that. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, quite a, like, a, a challenge for me too. Cause um, yeah, I know we, we are like, um, we are working like um, without like um, set and also like costume designers. So we got to um, handle all the stuff and like all the materials ourselves. So I really like, um, like thank like Daz for provide, providing me so many <laughs> materials like pre um pre like before rehearsals and also before like um the meeting with david and also like i, I think like david and sabina so much for um working on this so hard and like um i know like you you um you guys like have like been um like paying some so many efforts on like <laughs> accents and also languages right <laughs> like independently because there are like no not um, much time for us to um, do this kind of, um, all these rehearsals and um, for me it's um, yeah it's um, it's a challenge uh, working on this um, period piece um, not only because it um, involves like two or like over two kinds of like styles and like periods and like history and also I I find I found it very um, challenging to um, like um, dealing with um, like different periods, especially um, via this kind of like virtual um, form. Because um, there are lots of um, things we had to um, discuss and show via um, like 
like websites and things online and like media, online media. So <laughs> you, I will say, yeah, Ruthie, you brought so many resources into our lives, like artistically and professionally, mm -hmm. like I mean, the amount of photos that you were able to provide for us. Yes. And then I would be able to zoom in and I was like, what is like, what am I looking at here? What is this? And be able to like, <laughs> yeah, the actors and had to costume themselves too. So we had to provide a little bit of like a motherly community theater vibe yeah. and be like, Hey, yeah. what's in your closet? Like moment. And like, <laughs> yeah, try to like, Hey, what I'm like ta actually talking about, like, <laughs> do, do you guys even like receive it? Like, <laughs> to say, like, you know, we're very grateful. We have like a wonderful team to help us. Like, this is for us as a learning process. Like when David was asking me, like, where is Timor? I'm like, well, I actually don't know. So we have to try to find the map, which they Mushi provide yeah. for us. And then we're finding, oh, this is Timor. So for us, I think this is great, especially today's Veteran Day. Like we're talking about war, and then even though we're like, you know, life's moved on now, it's like 2020, but we, I think for a uh, human being, we should always uh, try to learn our history and then try to acknowledge that and try to respect, like that's how, where we come from. And right. then, yes. So thank you for- um, Yes, thank you, Mushi. Thank you for everything you did. Thank you yes. for every frantic yeah. email and, and phone call, <laughs> Zoom message, I am truly. Thank you. you brought so much yeah. And you gave the actors uh, comfort too, to know that what they had or that they were on the right uh, track. Um, so I deeply yeah. appreciate that. Um, I do, I wanted to circle back, I'm sorry about about language because I would love to talk to, a little bit to uh, Yensu and Emily who are our translators um, for both separately, the script itself um, um, and then the lyrics, um, which both then have to be translated into English for this specific reading. And I'm sure on some kind of like time crunch too, there was, probably a schedule of being like, and now it's happening. And that like is no small task. Um, Yensu, do you want to speak to us about your uh, your experience with the piece previously and then uh, uh, translating the piece into uh, English? Uh, if there, like if uh, what your, um, uh, what it what it was like to uh, translate the piece from its uh, original language and then uh, to this uh, new forum? Uh, hi, can you everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, first, I this is my first time to translate Chinese into English. Most of the time, I change new movie subtitle or script from English to Chinese. And as you know that they have different languages, Taiwanese, Japanese, and Chinese, that my part is translate to note that there are three languages here. So yeah. the, the most difficult work is for you guys to use different accent, different style to move it to stage, right. that's all. Absolutely, yeah, Absolutely. and thank you, thank, thank you, you, because without your work, I wouldn't have been able to even take the story for what the story is worth, right? You put it in a language that I could read the script and cry. Well, what right? your Chinese? Language? Yeah, my, my my Mandarin is a long way to come, but I was to read it in English. It was very emotional, so thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for all of that. Um, Emily, will you speak to us a little bit about um, the score existing um, in Mandarin and then having to translate it into English? What that process was like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Sheng very graciously asked me to hop on board as the lyric translator, um, which was an adventure. I leaned a lot on him during the process. Like there'd be a lot of like 3 a.m. texts being like, hey, so when you say this, like what, what do you, what do you mean? Because a lot, like what I, what I like quickly found out is that a lot of the Hokkien used in the show is like very, it's very period. It's like very like poetic mm. and yeah. and like I would ask my mom and I would ask my uncles like like there would be like I would be sitting at the kitchen table and there'd be like I'd be like hey okay so listen to this recording what what are they saying and they'd be like oh, we don't know because <laughs> um, I think it's like it's it's from like a generation that's a little older than theirs um, and so. Like I remember Sean and I had this conversation about like how how do we like like separate the Mandarin from the Japanese from the Taiwanese in like all of the lyrical content. And at one point we were thinking that like because the Taiwanese was so poetic and so heightened that like we would want the Taiwanese to be heightened too. But I think after I did a draft, um, 
that was like, no, 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 this is this is too much. Like, let's let's take it back. Let's make it very colloquial. Um, that way, like, cause cause. I mean, if you like think about it from the pers perspective of like Sun and like Lin, like this is their like native language and so it should feel like the homiest. So like it was then a process of like dialing it back and trying to like make it feel more heartfelt and letting like the music heighten it, you know, to like leave space for the music, which I thought was like real cool. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta say like, because I've been involved this uh, Tropical Angel project since last year. And I remember when Jen was uh, mentioned, like uh, they Shane and Dad they want to do the English version. I was uh, I remember I was talking to Shane like the lyrics is gonna be really hard because like you said the language is different, uh, the metaphor is different. Like in the show we have three different languages, three or four different languages. As a Taiwanese, I don't really speak Hokkien. I don't really speak Taiwanese, the dialect. And I think you did a great, like, wonderful job. Like a lot of uh, like, the, the music, the lyrics, because the, the lyrics, because uh, you translate into English the way like we uh, understand the metaphor that we understand like what Shen um, tried to express in his music. So just cool to that. Thank you so much. And Shen, if you want to say something about um, the lyrics, lyrics. I, I will pick back oh. off of what Sabina just said quickly. I do want to say, and this is a compliment to Datsa and Shen and you, Emily, that um, having directed pieces all over, uh, musically period pieces, um, that sometimes with, and I love opera, but opera tends to get stuck in the song and then mm -hmm. we don't tell the story, we express an emotion for four minutes. And then a lot of uh, older musical theater does the same thing. It's an idea and we're sitting in an idea for a long time. And what you guys were able to do was extend the scene in the song. And that yeah. I understood that obviously through the English translation because I don't, as you know, <laughs> uh, you know, like, uh, but I'm sure that it exists too in the, in the Mandarin production, but I really loved and I'm sure Gabby could say something to this too, is that like the songs continued the scenes and it not only expressed an emotion, but allowed the conversation to continue. And like that felt very much like contemporary American musical theater to me. And I loved that. And I'm sure that our audience that only speaks English was really able to live in the moment of the song because it was written this way. The storytelling was uh, presented as such. So thank you for that, because I love that. I love directing the songs. I, it was where I really missed us being in the room, because that's obviously where all the blocking and all the amazing moments that we discover mm -hmm. as an actor and actor uh, come together, because you guys did such a good uh, uh, job of telling the story within the song. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Shen, do you want to talk a little bit about the lyrics, um, writing the lyrics, uh, maybe even the first time in, uh, in Mandarin and now uh, having to hear it in English this time? Yeah, so again, like big shout out to Emily. Like, so it's like the translator you can dream of. Like, I barely have to change any melody. Like, when I get the lyric from awesome. from Emily, so that's just like excellent, excellent work. And also, like, I remember like the first song I got from Emily was <laughs> "Woman Tree," right? And like, so when I got the when I got the lyric translated, I was crying because like it's like so it's both it's I think Chinese like in terms of language is poetic in general, but it's like different poetry in Taiwanese or in Mandarin. But I think like Emily got the essence of it like really, really like thorough. And like, I just like, we really appreciate like how uh, like a person can understand not only the language aspect, but also cultural aspect of like the, just the thing behind the language. So yeah, that's just great. So thank you. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thanks to both of you. Please. Yes, yeah, thank it was, you. The music is uh, the music is unreal. Seriously, it. it I mean, Gabby, do you want to talk? I mean, you're the musical director too. I don't know. You've been working <laughs> on this show so long. Um, but do, uh, speaking about the score specifically, I just there are so many gorgeous melodies here, and with the translation, I just couldn't help but every time we worked on it and read it, think like, wow, this song really does this thing here. Mm -hmm. Where like there, where other shows, especially new musical theater, there's always that song where you're like, mm -hmm. and this and this song is pretty. But I constantly felt that you were giving me character development, and it was so easy to direct. And we had really smart actors, and they asked yes. a lot of great questions. And I, I'm a teacher, and then to direct and like have that back and forth, it was just it was so intellectually stimulating. Uh, it was very fulfilling. Um, Gabby, do you want to say anything about singing the score or? Um, yeah, I agree about the storytelling with the songs. I yeah, the characters are each are in a different emotional place by the end of the song than the beginning, which I think 
for me is a mark of a, of really good storytelling when it comes to a blend of music and, and lyrics and, and narrative and yeah I, like you said it that's more contemporary musical theater and i think you it was blended so perfectly being a, a, a period piece as well like it's not a contemporary story yet it was told contemporarily <laughs> um, um so yeah it just I think it was just the perfect combination of everything. Yes. It was like yes. the perfect story. Also, Shen writes was, really well for the female voice. There was some really beautiful moments. Yes. Yeah, seriously, as as a singer, I was like, wow, that just sits in a place where it's supposed mm -hmm. to sit. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no like unrealistically low notes or high notes that like someone who is who is male would be like, oh <laughs> Yes, it played it played to the color of, of our of very our realistic. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, but uh, I just want to say, like, uh, I really enjoy playing like, Shen's music. This is not my first time, but every time I feel like I can figure like a new color from his music. But some of the night I hate his music because I have to like, you know, keep recording over and over again, just try to like, you know, get it like to a perfect. But, you know, Shen, you know how much I love you. But I want to say like, uh, his music, it's like, he doesn't really play the safe card, which I love it. So, uh, you know, Throughout like the act one and act two, you can see, you can hear like he really spent a lot of time and effort try to use the chord, try to use the different uh let's say different line voice line and different harmony to create like the a conflict or create the dissonant sound to do the tension. So I feel like when I play the music, even without the singer, I can feel like what he wanna go, like where does he wanna go to tell the story. So. Great job, Shen. Like, I uh, absolutely. I I want to say too that there's a this is a rare thing that we get to do together too. That Sabina and I both we met in music school, so we both have several music degrees. And constantly, I was like, Kamikaze feels like a Sondheimian piece, mm. and then there's another song that feels like Miss Saigon, and just like there, I if I bet I could go through Shen's iPod and find the things, the music that we both <laughs> love. And it's you're so smart because you're giving me, you're painting. With, uh, with multiple colors, right? Yes. And I just, for me, musically, like was just like, oh, wow, this functions differently as this character and this melody is really appropriate for Shalene. And mm -hmm. when Lynn, when you reference the melodies that you sung earlier in the counterpoint, like I could die. Like that is so beautiful when yes. you, that last song where you bring, or uh, the second last song where you bring Lynn's theme back, like I just like, and I don't know if everyone in the audience like feels that moment, but I just like, <gasps> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, yes, me, like, give yes. me this motif in a new key and I'm thriving. Like, it was, it's beautiful. It's so smart. And thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm so happy that so many people got to see it tonight. They yes. got to experience it. And in a new language. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's like, it's unreal. It's unreal. Um, okay. Okay. Um, we are very, very lucky to have uh, Mayan joining us, who is the Artistic Director of Musical Theater Factory. Thank you so much for being here with Thank us. You. Um, it's so nice to virtually meet you. Um, and um, I, get, I would love to talk to you a little bit about, uh, you, this was your first experience, I think, to Tropical Angels this evening. Um, and uh, I would love to uh, for you to talk a little bit about that. And then also, like, I would love to know what your experience has been, or Musical Theater Factory's experience has been with this realm of virtual theater, how you guys are discovering or thriving um, in this new era of our careers. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I mean, what a massive endeavor, right? From the translation to the book um, and on, and, and about such a rich time in history and the incredible struggles that all of these characters went through. Um, and I think that I think that I'm sitting really actually with thinking about the comfort women. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting with that reality. I'm sitting with um, the knowledge that they would often be kept and raped repeatedly throughout the day and night. And I'm sitting with the fact of the the way in which um, I've seen pictures of the comfort women. I've seen pictures of them. And I'm wondering about the research and history that you all delved into when looking at those characters um, and, and, and what um, of their perspective, you know, uh, I, I love the lyric about being a tree. I actually really, really love that. I think that's incredibly powerful. And actually, Shang, I heard it in, in Mandarin. 
I remember I was at that concert and how beautifully it translated. But I think that's the big question that I'm asking right now after having seen it is the rendition of, of that scene of the women with makeup that, you know, that, that sort of, that sort of like look at that when I think the reality was quite different. Yeah, I think that's that's a wonderful point. We there was a very there was a conversation about uh, this this topic, and this is a uh, there's a little knowledge of what this looked like and how this actually functioned. Um, and uh, Dotsa in the script that we received, there's only really this one scene, and it's it's a very quick and uh, and feels almost like it's not a main part of the story, but it's obviously Shalene's entire experience, like. Having done the research with uh, Mushi, who has really provided us a lot of, of things that I truly did not know, and having seen pieces about comfort women and just even like American knowledge of what that means and that it's not just a geisha makeup and beautiful dresses, that what their lifestyle was like. Um, I didn't realize that these women were taken so far too, that Timor was incredibly far away from Taiwan. It's not even near Japan. Like I really didn't understand how long they had traveled, been put on boats, who survived, who didn't survive. They get there, they were put in jail. And then it was their time to come to the brothel to be trained and be raped repeatedly. I mean, it just, there's, there's so much, there. there's another story there, right? It's like, we were telling, we're telling Lynn's flashback story and Shalene is part of this story, but she has her own story here, and it's the entire culture of comfort women. And we only get this one glimpse of it, which is one of my favorite songs in the show. But it does it does feel a little like presenting. It didn't feel uh, like there was this darkness of realism in that song. It's almost an upbeat song about a really horrible thing, yes. right? And I think that's an we talked about that too. Mm -hmm. That that was a really interesting choice to have the song be almost da 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 da, da and it's like what's happening what are we really what is she really saying to her right mm. did you want to right and i think like now this is hard because we're doing virtually mm -hmm. so like we I th we definitely try our best is like try to send the message or try to let people understand like uh what she's been through like she has no choice even though at the end of the song she has to look pretty and put up makeup but that's not her choice right. she probably has to do that to survive that period. So I think this, this is a very interesting topic. Like I think in the further like production, we'll we'll, we'll definitely like dig deep into that. Like how do we uh, tell the story right? How do we uh, let people understand that part of the history still for some people still carry on in their lives? Maybe it's not first, you know, maybe it's their like second or or third generation, but this is the history. So I think this is definitely a very interesting topic. Yeah. we should. Yeah, I think to. part of that, I think that number is incredibly scary. Yes. Um, and I think that if it was, if we were able to do it in person, even it being very well lit and being maybe too in your face about what's actually happening to this character. I mean, Gabby, we, you know, we had figured out a way for you to show us what uh, her small transition was in a Zoom movie montage of three minutes to music, right? Mm -hmm. um, but like having to, even just like it, still what we did, the, the strip show or the having being dirty and then being put into makeup, it's still so presentational. It's still so put yes. on. It's not even close to what this woman's real experience would would have been or um, was mm -hmm. um i i totally hear you man i think that's a real a real takeaway and i think that that conversation needs to continue yes. with the team and whoever moves forward with the piece because i think that that moment can be even more influential if it's it lives in this place of realism and harshness even with the song being well lit and up tempo i think it actually makes it scarier yes and yeah. I, I think that no yes yeah. like that's the intention i think when they're in Taiwan and then they did uh, the research about like comfort women. I think you guys uh, went to um, the museum or like you know, did the interview. Do you guys want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, so for the show itself, like I would like to say, uh, we kind of save all that realism into act two, actually. So we will get a full point of view from Salen's point of view, like once she's becoming a comfort woman. And in the second act, we actually just wrote a song about like her whole experience, which is more like in a realism way. Yeah, so we kind of want that contrast right now for like act one and act two. So yeah, if that answer any <laughs> question. I, yeah. think, I think that's really interesting. And I think it's also important to really understand their realities and that they weren't needing to put on lipstick. The men did not care. 
Yeah. This is a situation where the men did not care. Yeah. And to follow that up with the next scene where she has Lynn come by and it's all about taking care of him. <laughs> the woman's the woman's just, you know, been put into a really horrific situation. You know, and she has lipstick on. I, I just, I'm just really aware of the fact that, like, there's such, such care taken with the male characters and what the men are going through. And like, you know, I, I love the queer thread that runs through it. I, I think that that's really powerful. And I, I'm just excited about how you, um, really look deeply into the woman's reality, and. And, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't have a take on it, you know, and a ferocity to it, but um, presenting them as uh, needing to learn to seduce is actually um, far from history. I, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. This is a, a conversation that was not able to be had in the depth that it deserved, and partially because putting up a virtual production in three and a half weeks was an experience in itself, but this was something that I had read the script and I had questions about and didn't feel I knew enough about. Mushi and I had spoken, um, and then Gabby as the actress, I needed to take care of her and what would be comfortable for her and how to be presented. It was, it it created a, a certain uh, narrative and track mm -hmm. for us to uh, complete the production. But I truly love that you were saying this because I think that this is the conversation that if I could if I could back this, this is the conversation to be had moving forward. And I do agree that scene seven comes in a in a tone very quickly right after that song. I do I do agree with that uh, feedback. Um, I did wanna, um, cause you just said it, man, it was one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. One of my favorite parts of the show is this queer uh, Asian narrative, this this story that happened 80 years ago and this like closeted experience. And there's a backstory of Matsunaga that like I had to speak to the writers about to really get because I don't think it was, it was given enough to us in the show for the audience to really take uh, a hold of. Um, and moving forward, I would love to discover that moment. But um, what that, um, Datsa, is that narrative, that narrative exists in the novel, uh, Matsunaga's uh, infatuation for uh, Lin? Uh, you, you, you know, you know. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, so there's some clues in the original novel, but like, so late, so during that time period, uh, Japanese army didn't actually, like state it as like gay love or queer love, but they just like have a lot of like intimacy between soldiers during the occupation periods. So yeah, so we kind of just took it and then expanded like more. So Masnaga actually had a secret lover, which we will give away in the second hand as well. So <laughs> yeah, so we kind of just want to take it like, so it's like his own repression of his affection mm -hmm for Mel or his secret lover or Lynn. And kind of, we want to kind of like weave it into with the false um, religion about his patriotism, mm. so to say, yeah. It's why we love this novel so much because it's very rich. It's combined, combined uh, uh, very many, many issues in here, uh, like uh, comfort woman and uh, the, the, um, uh, uh, like gay things in the army and and the war and the the human the, the struggle the struggle in the war. So we 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 uh, it is a huge story. So yeah, we yeah. just so we just saw a lot of like contemporary topics, so to say, in the original yeah. novel, and we want to expand them as mm. as much as possible in this show. Yeah. Like, I love this. I love this. I love the ability to go deep in history. And I'm excited about the queer thread that runs through it. And, and that the, that the, that gayness is not about pre predatory action. And, and what might actually be under longing and desire in, in the construct of power. Right? Mm -hmm. because, right, because he has so much power uh, 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 with Lynn that desire, when you attach it to power, becomes predatory. And so, like, like how complex is that? How powerful are all of those layers in this world? I just think there's so much potential. 
I, it's one of it's one of my favorite parts of the story, yes. and it was the most interesting uh, working with the actor Tao, who played Matsunaga, and the actor Mateus, who played Lin, and discovering that, um, and obviously the script uh, adapting um, in the English translation, and like where where was the line, like where was too forward, and what was not forward enough for us to discover in their six or seven lines that there was this tone or there was this, and obviously in the room, if the actors were able to make eye contact with one another in a room or we were able to discover blocking in that regards, there's so many ways to just give the audience a little more of an idea of what we're trying to uh, present. And on Zoom, it was just really interesting. And every Zoom rehearsal is the same as what we had recorded um, in the structure of how we worked. And it was just so interesting to see the actors really think and really engage and like try to imagine being in this situation where there is this power struggle, right? And that, and that eliminating that idea that queerness doesn't have to come from this, I dominate and you, uh, you are dominated by. Like, I, I think that that, I, you wrote in you wrote a you wrote a beautiful opera. There's so many themes here. It's so extreme. The stakes are so high. There are melodies. I mean, it's it's just thrilling. And I think that for me, that was one of the I know that the for me, Matsunaga's character is just like one of the best parts of working on the show is really trying to for me to for me, he was the most far removed, so he was the most interesting to try to understand. And like uh that was really thrilling for Tao and I to collaborate on that. Um, great. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I love that we, you, you got there, man. I appreciate that. Um, uh, and then, um, we actually have a question from one of our, um, audience members. Um, so, um, Mark Zidick, uh, asked, what do you feel the full production says about Taiwan's very complex and unique history and culture about Taiwanese people? So this might be, uh, more maybe for the writers or the team members that are uh, here in Taiwan. So what do you feel the full production says about Taiwan's very complex and unique history and culture about Taiwanese people? Right, so I think the whole story like we just talked about like a lot of topics included in the story, but I think most of all, like what we as writers want to get away from the story is identity because that's the topic or issue that Taiwanese people constantly facing like forever I would say yeah. so yeah so we just so like the whole Taiwanese history is like the endless colonization so like if you want to put it that way it's like either from China and then by Japan for 50 years and then after that China again and like even now we are still searching for our like real identity. Yeah, so, and I think for now it's like um, the basic, the core value for Taiwanese people, I would say is freedom and democracy right now. And like, so I think that's also why we, we're trying to pull the story either on stage or on screen in this, in this moment. It's like, we just, um how to say this um yeah so we kind of want to use our freedom to put this like so there's a lot of taboo topics in the story so say either come from women or like like even taiwan has sex, same sex marriage right now but we're still like fighting for lgbtq rights forever i would say but so i think we kind of want to use our freedom to tell the story and in this process also at the same time figuring out like what our true identity is and i don't think this is like we have a conclusion yet but like this is just a working process where us like keep fighting with yes and i just want to echo a little bit it's like taiwan has a very rich culture and very rich history but then uh, even though the story of the show is held in 1940 uh, in the way, it's kind of similar to like this day, 2020, because Taiwan is the place that we constantly still face the international struggle. We still try to figure out like, where, what are we? Mm. Like a lot of people, like my friend, like now I live in New York, it's been eight years. Um, um, a lot of friends, like they don't know where is Taiwan. They're still confused about Taiwan and Thailand. They're still confused like Taiwan and China. Which is like, as a Taiwanese, like I feel like I really want to let people who I love so much here in the States understand like, that's my hometown, that's my country, and that's that will be forever my home. So I think like, this is a great question. I think in this show, uh, talking about like identity struggle, talking about like, uh, you know, the characters are confused about like Japanese or Taiwanese, in a way, sometimes we feel the same way too. So I think this will be the like, open conversation in the, uh, 
uh, the in the production uh, in the in the future of production, we we'll, we we'll try to figure out like how do we um, tell the story and let more people understand our land. Mm. You know, respect our history, and then what can we do to make that beautiful land better and let people to recognize us more in the in, internationally in the world. So yeah, that's beautiful. That beautiful. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yes, please. <laughs> I just want to like add something like to um, Shen's and then Sabina's points. Um, yeah, because this, um, as we, um, although we we just like um, have a bit of the the whole production today, we only see the uh, we only saw the act act one, but actually it um, and and act one like um, touched very uh, little even on um, Taiwan, um, um, the colony, uh, history of um, being colonized by Japan, even just a little bit. But I think it's interesting that uh, actually the intersection or like the encounter of um, uh, Lai Xaling and also Lin Yiping in this kind of like the South Pacific area in, this, um, in Timor, this island, actually it kind of reflects the um, complexity and also the um, diversity of this kind of like uh, um, culture and also the history that all come into um, um, Taiwanese society because we also we have kind of like uh, indigenous people um, um, different tribes who has a like cultural relations actually um, with the um, those islanders, um, Pacific Islanders, and also we have got, got some like Chinese cultures and like Japanese culture. A lot of them, like just they are all like um, integrated in Taiwanese culture. So I think it's kind of like a, a interesting um, comparison, also a, a reflection. And also, I I uh, recall the um, uh, one moment I worked with um, David on this um, uh, context research. And David just like uh, you, you, you ask me like why why Shaolin and um, Yi, Lin Yiping they share kind of like a same dialect, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and just like it's it was so complicated and it so was so difficult to um, actually give a very clear expl um, explanation about the um, like uh, Shaolin's origin, um, maybe from. Um, might be from uh, like uh, um, early immigrants from like the South China, like to the uh, South Pacific. And also like there are some early immigrants from China to um, Taiwan hundreds, a uh, hundred years ago. So it makes some like uh, the, the, the uh, Hokkien just like uh, di diverge into like different kinds of dialect used by uh, different people in different uh, places and especially uh, different regions in Asia. So I think it's kind of like a really like mind blowing and amazing to see this uh, script and this musical reflects this kind of like com complexity, yeah. Yes, thank you for that. Thank, I, you. thank you, Mark, for this question. I think this conversation is so important and it's so um, so inspiring to people who uh, in America here who don't know enough about the actual history of this war and the experience of these people. Um, I think when she kind of backed what I said before is that when the when the piece is in English, there's this real moment that we're missing here, this like rarity that these two people from different parts of Taiwan would be able to hear one another in this dialect, right? That like, what a moment when I was able, that was really explained to me in a way, I was like, whoa, like that that moment, that breath you take when you hear that, that language you haven't heard in months because you've been taken from your land and then to be like that, I was like, how will they understand this, right? And then I think the game of this show will be languages, right? Like how can, if it's, here for an American audience or an English language uh, audience, how will they understand these and what it means to hear Hokkien being spoke in Timor? Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Mark, for this question. Thank you for everyone. That was that was incredible. Um, and for an American audience to hear um, Taiwanese people speak about that, I think that that is incredibly empowering. Thank you. Um, we have another question, um, uh, which is a very funny process, but people are asking um, what the casting process was like for this experience. Um, and so, um, uh, well, we put we basically uh, we basically put out an ad on Playbill. Uh, we worked with the writers um, and we tried to uh, determine. I also had to cast the show before I read the play, 
which was a very unique experience. Um, so um, that was, uh, uh, we had a uh, small cuts of songs. We had about 32 bars of, I think like five songs. Yes. Something like five songs. And so for 32 bars, they knew exactly what was going on and what we needed. Um, and that was a very uh, unique experience. Um, mm -hmm. Usually have read the play many times or know the score by heart. Um, yes. And uh, not being in the room with them, they were all uh, pre-recorded auditions. Um, um, I have done my fair share of Zoom auditions at this point in um, the process, which is different than pre-recorded. Um, moving forward, I would absolutely do Zoom appointments so that there's a little more interaction and we could possibly direct or give yes. notes in that experience because mm -hmm. it was just like two or three videos of like their best take. Um, uh, Gabby, do you want to talk a little bit about what your uh, audition experience was like? Yeah, so it was it was really interesting to originate this role because um, usually in musicals I have some I have something I've listened to or I, I have some basis for how it's supposed to sound or the tone or even the story. I didn't like you. I hadn't read anything, so it was really interesting to to start from ground zero and to have nothing to work off of and to literally create this role and create. We worked with, you know, Sabina and I worked with the dynamics, obviously, and worked with the breathing and where do I breathe and the storytelling. But in terms of the through line of, of the meat of it, and I just, I'd never done that before. And it, it's, it was so, also, I grew up a musical theater kid. So a lot of the musicals that I've been a part of, I have no inside and out. So that was like really interesting to genuinely have nothing to work with and to only use my creativity. And um, it was so, it was just so fun to piece it together together in that way um yeah and you could really not that i couldn't do any wrong i could very well do wrong but it was very freeing it was very freeing to to really have like every, everything be my playground when it came to creating it um and how i wanted it to sound and, and be for the audition yeah i i yeah. for i think that that was uh for me at least in our collaborations too that that was felt like the through line because i didn't always know what i was looking for either and so i couldn't mm -hmm. have been more encouraging to be like yeah, what if, why not, let's go, we're still on Zoom. Like, and just having you do it 17 different ways where we were like, what felt the most effective or what yes. was the most powerful? Or like, you were like, I felt this. And I was like, great, that's what I was waiting for. You know, like, and that, and that, that was really cool because it was new for both of us. And look, Gabby and I have been fortunate enough to work together before on a show that we, everyone knows too well. So walking into the room, we're, well, we're doing the show, right? And so like, this yeah. was an incredibly unique experience to like, not have that and to not and both not be native speakers of the original text mm -hmm. that was really that was really cool for me as, as gabby and i being english speakers um yes yeah and i think like we're very fortunate like we're very lucky we had amazing amazing cast especially like this original musical pieces and then uh we are trying our best to do virtually and and i gotta say it's like it's been a journey yes it's absolutely been a journey at least for me and david uh, but yes, yeah, so to answer the questions, the casting process, it's a, uh, like you just said, uh, they are submit their videos and then we have callbacks and we really don't have a lot of material ready. So we are very grateful. Like we absolutely cast like the best people. Absolutely. We, we were very lucky and we were very fortunate to have many people apply. We watched yes. many videos, right? And many people were incredibly talented. We just, you know, looking at it and looking at, uh, who they play against, it was, if they made the most sense there. I will tell you that the biggest shock of that casting experience is that we found an incredibly beautiful, talented 11 year old boy yes. to play Kuru. He was unreal and what a professional that, that, that child, that human is to work with. It was always yes and how. I was lucky enough to have uh, two in-person rehearsals with him, socially distant uh, rehearsals with him and that, that I'm just so taken with that human and what he was able to bring to that role. I know that that role traditionally has not been played by a child before mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So it was not something I was looking for because I didn't think it was something that we could manage. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, his mother, Aki, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank, thank, you, so thank, you. Much. thank you. You are a professional. You're an angel. Thank you. Um, and uh, to be able to, uh, the team to uh, trust us, to yeah. bring on, Sobina and I are both educators. So it was it just like, it was so full circle. It was fulfilling. I was crying in my mask in rehearsals, watching this little boy discover moments and like really be the first person to sing these words out loud and yes. like be this character that like, we just have to care about so intensely. That was for me in the casting process. We found, I love all eight of you, but Caden touched <laughs> my heart. Yeah, in this production for sure. Um, 
Uh, I think we have like one big question that seems to be coming up um, from our live audience. And thank you everyone who's joining us and watching and uh, participating. Um, and this is a conversation that um, I would love to hear from any and all of you. I'd love a uh, man for you to tell me your experience in uh, Musical Theater Factory, but what do we feel now being a couple of months into this new um, expression of theater, uh, this new venue lane of virtual theater, where do we feel that we are going or what do we see as the future of virtual theater um, here in the States? If anyone feels that they have something to say, yes, please, man. Sure, I'll speak to that. Um, I will say that I'm currently also in a process that is uh, global, where we have people from Taiwan, Hong Kong, yeah. Chicago, San Francisco, and such an international crew as well. You know, like there's so many of us from Singapore, but people from China, just everywhere. And I would say that it's it's such a thrilling thing because the piece is about revolution, and you know your piece is about so many incredible themes. And what does it mean that we are actually able to work globally about these themes in time and space that is like no longer a border, right? Because we usually have that as a border. So I'm excited about the discourse that's possible between uh, people all over the world that we never thought we could have access to. And so I think there's there's something about access in the, the, the discussions that can happen. And I think that there are some people that are doing amazing things in the forum. Um, and sure, it's sort of like live video theater, it's it's yeah. video art in a way. Um, and and there, you know, we certainly are overcome, overcoming that. I do not think it will replace theater. Um, I don't think we want it to. Um, but I think that it is a way in which we're finding how to connect more uh, widely, and in some cases deeply. I mean, you are actually in my living room and I am in yours in some way. <laughs> when else would that have been able to happen? I'm looking at like Emily's wall with those you know, incredible post-its, which I wanna know about all the musicals she's writing about on those <laughs> post-its right there, right? And all of a sudden here we are. So I think, um, that's, I think that's pretty beautiful. And, and I think it's, um, I hope the connection continues. And I also hope we get to experience uh, song and, and story in person uh, again as well. Thank you for that. Yes, oh, thank you for that. I think that that, that is so real too. Yes. I mean, like even just us being able to collaborate with these actors in uh, Los Angeles and, and be, me meeting all of these incredible humans uh, in Taiwan, like mm -hmm. when would this have occurred, right? Yeah. This piece would, I would have, never have been fortunate enough to have crossed paths with, with these people and this piece. Um, Sabina and also and I in virtual land, we've taught uh, a full uh, educational curriculum uh, virtually this summer and like working with children in Chicago and working mm. with children in Texas. And I was just like, this is unreal. Like I would never get to meet you. We would never get this moment of like you crying through part of your world at 12 years old. Do you know what I mean? Like, and now I'm like, you've touched, you've changed me, you know? And like, I would never get, to teach this human, you know? So like right. that, this, it, it does open up all these opportunities. It feels like we were so limited when theater, I, I also work in Broadway. And so when everything shut down, it was just like, and now I do. And so like, <laughs> it's, you know, like, so this now, this new lane has created re all of new opportunity. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, uh, does anyone else want to say something in virtual? Yeah, Gabby, please. Um, yeah, something also about virtual theater that I hadn't thought about before is, is how much more accessible it is. Um, because I, that's one thing that kind of really started to turn me off a lot from especially Broadway, just how much the people who can actually get into the theater, you have to have a certain amount of money. And so mm -hmm. the fact that this is free and you can watch this from your bedroom and anyone from any like walk of life can just tune in. Um, and I think that that's so beautiful because that is the point for me of theater. It's to, to to be shown to people who need it, not people who just want to go to the theater to have something to talk about at dinner, you know? And it's, that's what I think it's become more so. And also I think the stories we're telling now are much more urgent. And instead of having, you know, a season that, we ha that a theater company has to fulfill, it's more of we put things on hold. And it's, it's no, like, this is so inconvenient that the stories that we choose to put on are ones that we really want to and that we need to, it's not, it's not, oh, here's another cabaret, like, here's another, like, Mamma Mia. Like, it's very much like, wow, like, we need to tell these original stories. And, and like, I just, yeah, I'm, this is something I hadn't thought about since before March. And I think this is something I would personally love to continue in some way, shape, or form. Some 
some parts I really miss, obviously. But yeah, I it's something I hadn't thought about before March, really. Yeah, uh, Gabby and Mayan both said it, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow, there are people on Facebook like watching the show now. Like that's insane. That's amazing. Like how many people can't afford to go see? Aladdin on Broadway, right? Yeah. And then now we're giving you a, a a story that like you didn't know you needed to hear or experience. And it's not my own story and so much is relatable and I care about these characters and I'm able to do it sitting on my, I mean, I wouldn't be in this jacket, right? But I would be sitting on my couch watching this story sobbing and how accessible and what an incredible opportunity that's being provided to all, not only the artists who create and collaborate, but now for the audience to experience, have a tangible uh, relation to the material. Yeah, it's that, that in itself is incredibly insightful and inspiring in this realm of virtual theater. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm being asked uh, before uh, I let everyone go and enjoy the rest of their evening um, to have Dots and Shen speak a little bit about the future of Tropical Angels. Uh, uh, for me, it's a very special experience to watch our our uh, works transform into English, especially online. So it's so well done and inspire me a lot. Uh, we wish the, this re, uh, English reading online is just the beginning. <laughs> the, we can continue to develop the, the musical uh, Tropical Angels, both in Mandarin version and English version. Yeah. Yeah. So for Tropical Angels right now, we have a full draft, but we are still like working on it and revise it on a daily basis, I would say. And we are going to have a, a full reading, stage reading in Chinese and Taiwanese in Taichung, Taiwan uh, at the end of this year. And then this will go into production next year in July. And I think after that, uh, I will also like, if everyone's on board, like I, I will also absolutely love it if we can keep working on English draft after the whole Chinese and Taiwanese draft is done. Yeah. I can't wait That's to find out what happens. I can't wait to find out what Act Two is. Um, um, I, I'm so humbled and so honored to have been part of this piece and truly to just be here tonight with all of you. I, I'm so impressed by all of you and I cannot thank you enough for what you have provided me um, and our team and uh, how you've supported this cast through this very unique process. Um, and I will say that I am proud of what we were able to do and I am proud to to know you and have you be some part of what makes me feel as a person and an artist. So thank you, thank all of you. Um, yes, and I just wanna say like, I know most of our cast is watching right now. Thank you so much. Like it's it's incredible like how much work and effort you put in for this piece. Uh, I know David and I would be like calling you, texting you, like like give me another you know take, give me another recording, and then you guys do wonderful, wonderful job. This show wouldn't be like this without you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you the cast and the production team and all of this uh, our friends that in Taiwan. Yes. And then uh, thanks to our videographer Cedric, and he's also in Taiwan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mushi. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Gabby. Yes. Thank you, Mayan. Thank you, Datsa. Thank you, Shen. Thank you to our producer, Yuxian Lu and uh, Chi Ping Yen. Thank you to our, our incredible videographer who <laughs> made crazy during this process. Thank you so much to Cedric Chow Yali. And thank you to Jackie uh, Spaventa, our woman behind the curtain, our tech supervisor for this evening. You've been a star. Thank you so much. Thank you, friends. Thank you to everyone watching at home. Um, I hope that you enjoyed Tropical Angels and I hope that you will uh, keep after us on this journey and what our next move is. And if you're in Taiwan in July, please come see Tropical Angels. Thank you guys. Thank you to Taipei Cultural Center for the Arts. Thank you, Musical Theater Factory. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Good Stay night, safe. friends. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Quick, 
将我放袂记，将我留伫